Okay, welcome to day seven. So I'm going to dive right in because we have a bunch to do here. I'm going to start within my routes file. And yeah, you'll remember in the last episode, uh, temporarily, we duplicated the list of jobs. So I defined the array here, and then we did a copy paste down here as well. But yeah, clearly, um, that doesn't scale at all. So we need to solve this problem. But hmm, I'm going to solve this problem in a very incremental way. And I'm going to do it uh, in this way because I think it will help you better understand some of the concepts that we will discuss in the next episode. So just bear with me and come along for the ride. Okay, so if we're thinking incrementally, well, the first thing we could do is just push the array up one level. So I could select our list of jobs here, cut it, and then push it up one level, which in this case is just the routes file. So I could have a list of jobs like so. And then if we scroll down, we could use those jobs. So make that variable available within this closure here, and then I can pass it in. Okay, then I can do the exact same thing here. So get rid of it. And then once again, make that variable available in this function. And yeah, we have now removed that duplication. Back to the browser, click a link, and yeah, everything works exactly in the way it did before, which is great. All right, let's keep going. Uh, next, I'm going to wrap this within sort of a data container. So let's create a class called job. And I wanted to find a method that will fetch all of my jobs. And I just said the word all. Let's make that the method name. So I have a method called all, and I'm going to make it static. That's fine for now. And we will select all of these right here, this whole array, and bring it in like so. All right. And then, of course, I don't need to define the variable here. OK, so, yeah, it's just a container uh, at this point. If I call job all, that's going to return this array to me. OK, so now we can scroll down. We will no longer need use jobs, so I can get rid of that because now we have a class. And I can replace the variable names here, and I'll select both of these with our job class, colon, colon, all. All right, makes sense. We now have a class with a method called all that returns an array. And let's make that explicit by adding a return type. We can do that by adding a colon and then the type of the data that we're returning, in this case, an array. So we're just being explicit about what type of data is being uh, returned from this method. Okay. So let's go back to the browser once again, give it a try, and everything works just as it did before. Cool. All right, let's keep going. Does it make sense to have a class named job inside of our routes file? No, it's not really where it goes. So why don't we instead place this within our app directory? But where do we put it? Well, I think we're going to use the models directory here. Okay. Now, let's take 30 seconds to quickly go over this because I think it's important. And by the way, that's why I'm doing a side camera view. It's that important, so listen up. Open your ears. Okay, uh, model is a key term, and it comes from the MVC architecture. MVC stands for Model View Controller, uh, and it's not unique to Laravel. Lots and lots of tools and frameworks uh, adhere to it. Uh, it's just a system. It's a methodology for how to go about constructing applications and how each piece of the puzzle should and can communicate with each other. So Model View Controller. MVC. And as it turns out, you've already learned about views, right? It's the presentation layer. Controllers, we're going to talk about more, but what we're doing in that routes file where we define a route and then we have a function that handles that route, that's your controller, basically. But we'll get into that more in a couple episodes. So that leaves model. Now, I'm going to keep it very basic. Your model can represent uh, your data persistence, but also the business logic tier of your application. So think about it. If you were building a jobs board platform, the concept of a job is really important, and it would have all of this behavior associated with it, right? Uh, what are what are the rules for creating a job? Um, or can jobs be marked as open or available or filled? Uh, what happens when a job is filled? You know, there are all of these questions that you have to ask whenever you build an application. And then that doesn't even account for how do you store these jobs? Do you write them to a file? Are they being placed in a database? How do we remove a job? How do we archive a job? How do we delete a job? All of this stuff uh, can be encapsulated under this umbrella of model. So hmm, if we have a models directory and we have this job class, 
well, maybe the job class should go in the models directory. So let's do that now. If I open up models, you'll see we already have a user class, and we will learn about that more a little later. So let's create a class here, and I'll call it job. And you'll see my editor populates the class, but I'm going to remove that so that I can copy over the one that we've already created. So I grab that and move it over. Okay. Now, if I scroll up real quick, I want you to notice that we have a namespace of app models. And notice how that correlates to the directory structure here, app models. Okay. So I'm going to assume that you understand what a namespace is, but if not, the five second explanation is it's a way to organize your code, right? As you can imagine, the class name job is not that unique. So for example, if I look in the entire project and framework for job, right at the top, I see three different files that have the name job. One of them refers to a queued job, one of them refers to an interface, and one of them is our job model. So as you can imagine, without some kind of organizational structure in place, you have collisions. Just like 20 years ago when you were organizing your downloaded music, you didn't put everything within a top-level folder, right? Instead, you grouped it according to the artist. So all Jamiroquois songs went in a Jamiroquois directory. All uh, ZZ Top songs went in a ZZ Top directory. It was a way of grouping things to avoid potential collisions and also just to make things easier to reason about. Okay, so all you need to know right now is Laravel conforms to an autoloading standard called PSR4, and that is defined within your composer.json file. And yeah, if I scroll down, you'll see it right here. Autoload PSR4. And if this is all just gibberish and you're like, I have no idea what I'm looking at, that's okay. Just come along. PSR4 is a convention and a standard for autoloading files. And we can define our mapping, so to speak, right here. And Laravel does this for you automatically. So Laravel is saying right here, I want an app namespace, and I want that root to be located at this path. Okay? So the app namespace is located at this path. From that point onward, any directories you create are sort of like creating a new folder when organizing your music. So notice how user follows that app models is the namespace. If we go anywhere else, how about HTTP controllers controller, then it will follow that namespace app HTTP controllers. And when we do this, we now have uh, enough sophistication to automatically import these files without having to uh, traditionally require them like you might have done uh, 15 years ago with PHP. Okay, so all of that to explain when I come back to my routes file, all I have to do here is use it and it's instantly available to me. I can say use app models job just like that. Okay. Back to the browser, click a link, and yeah, everything works again, just as it did before, which is a good thing, because now we're getting a little bit more comfortable. We've learned about views. And now we're dipping our toes into this idea of models and extracting data into its own class to which we can then apply behavior and logic to. So for example, what about right here? This section where we have a route that listens for a specific URI to view a single job. When we do, we fetch all of the jobs, and then we have this array class that Laravel provides that finds the first job that matches the ID from the URI or the URL. So this kind of behavior could go in the job class, couldn't it? Let's give it a shot. I'm going to select this whole thing here, and I will command click on job, which will take me directly to the file. And let's add a new method here. Once again, it'll be static. And I'm going to call this find because I want to find a specific job with the given ID. And that ID should be an integer. All right. And then I will paste in that code. Okay. So ultimately, we will return an array. So let's import this class, illuminate support array. And then I will add the return type to make it clear that we expect an array to be returned here. Okay. So now notice job all. Well, we're already within this job class, aren't we? So why don't we just say static all, and that would be fine. And now we've taken some relatively confusing code, and we've isolated it behind a simple method that makes it very clear what it does. Oh, this code finds a job with the given ID. 
Okay, so now check this out. We'll go back to our routes file and I can get rid of this confusing logic and just replace it with job equals job find by the given ID. Notice how much that cleans things up too. All right, let's test our work. Okay, so back to the browser. Give it a refresh. Click a link. It still works the way it did before, but now it's even better. Um, and that's cool. And I think this is really cool, actually. So now, remember in the last episode, we we touched on this idea of the happy path. And the happy path is if everything went according to plan, this is how it works. So what about if it didn't go according to plan? For example, what if the user tries to visit a job uh, with an ID that we don't have in our system, like 20. Well, right now we get an error, right? So for the job class, when we used the find method, we expected the returned value to be an array, but null was returned because there was no matching item here. So this makes sense, but also real quick, we should talk about return types. Uh, if I come back to the job class, if you did not add this return type, and types in general are optional in PHP, but if we did not add this, your uh, error message will be different from mine because it will be caught at a different point in the script's execution. So have a look. If I remove it, come back and refresh, it still doesn't work because within the view, we're trying to uh, interact with it as if it were an array, but it's not. It's null. So it still fails, but it fails at a different point. And whether you enjoy types or not, and believe me, there are world wars when it comes to, to topics like this, uh, just know that one of the benefits is it will, it will pick up on potential issues uh, earlier in the script's execution. And generally, that's a good thing. Okay. Anyways, come back, give it a refresh. And now we know, okay, well... We have to handle the situation where we're trying to find a job, but one wasn't available. And we have to handle that in a specific way. All right, let's do that now. So we're going to try to find the matching job. However, in certain situations, job could be null. So why don't we just check for that? So if is null, or I could just write if not job, and that will effectively do the same thing, then we should probably abort and display a 404 page. 404 uh, stands for not found. It's a browser status code, and it's exactly what we want in this case. You're trying to access this page, but we, we don't have anything to show you. Sorry, 404, not found. So with Laravel, we have a helper function called abort, and we can include a status code as the first argument here. And by the way, one thing that I really love about Laravel is how all we have to do is call this support function and it will then bubble up in our system to the point that Laravel will catch it and understand what to do. So hmm, we have a 404 exception here. I'm going to translate that into the appropriate response and you don't have to do anything to make that work. Have a look here. If I switch back to the browser and we refresh, notice that this time we do get a 404 not found page. All right, so I think that about does it for day seven. Uh, real quick, we're no longer using this class, so I can remove the import. And I think we're in pretty good shape here. So notice we've cleaned up the routes file considerably. Uh, we've learned about models, and we've created our first model. Uh, we've learned a bit more about data encapsulation and behavior and how to handle uh, the sad paths or the, the unexpected paths. You've learned about custom uh, status codes and how they are converted into responses automatically by Laravel. We really covered quite a bit for day seven. So no homework for today. Keep playing around with this. Get comfortable. And then I think you're ready for day eight. I'll see you then.